in physics, we do a lot of work with uh, with vectors, and uh, one thing that we will want to be able to do with vectors quite frequently is add vectors together. So we have a couple of different methods for that. Uh, we can add vectors graphically, which involves uh, drawing the vectors out to scale using protractors and rulers, and, <clears throat> and then making some measurements to get our uh, get our results, figure out what our, our vectors add up to. And that's an okay method, but you know there's there's a little bit of a lack of uh, of precision in in that method, and it's just not quite as reliable as um, doing a strictly mathematical uh, method. So the analytical method is going to be our, our preference on these problems. The very first step in the analytical method for adding vectors is called vector resolution. That means if we take a vector at some angle, we can figure out the, the components in um, perpendicular directions of that vector. So let's say, for example, that um, we were given there's some object, some uh, car or boat or whatever, um, is moving uh, about this direction here at a speed of about uh, 50 meters per second. And uh, we'll say this is uh, 20 degrees north of east. 20 degrees. Oops. Looks like a decimal in there. That wasn't supposed to be there. 20 degrees. There we go. North of east. And um, if you're if you're struggling on the naming conventions, just think about uh, you know, how you how you would describe um, position of something. So, you know, if your house is five miles north of the mall, uh, somebody would know that okay, I start at the mall and then go five miles north of that. If some direction is 20 degrees north of east, then we start at east and we go 20 degrees toward north from that. So it's just a rotation instead of a, um, a linear movement, but it's still the same system of naming. So probably the uh, the components that we would want to find here would be the the part of this uh, um, uh, velocity vector in the eastern direction and the part that's in the northern direction. And so to do this, we're just going to make this uh, this vector into a right triangle where we have an x part like this, or a part in the eastern direction like this, and a part north like this. And since up and down we usually call y, left and right we usually call x, so I'll just name our um, uh, sides with x and y. And then there's a right angle right there between our x and y axes. And you could also switch colors here. You could also draw those going like this, oops, a little higher, like this, and then over like this, and we'll see that this length is the same as this length, this one is the same as this one. It's a rectangle that I've drawn there with the red and the green, so it doesn't matter which which way you draw this. Um, I've got the 20 degree angle in here, so I'll go ahead and include that in my triangle just to uh, simplify so I don't have to do that one extra uh, calculation that I can make mistakes on, of figuring out this angle by noting that it's the complement of this one. Um, so now if I want to find x and y, I'm going to use trig functions to do that. So x is on the side that's adjacent to this angle, so that tells me I would need to use cosine of the angle, 20 degrees, is equal to the adjacent side, x, over the hypotenuse, 50 meters per second. And then if we multiply both sides by 50, we see that x is equal to 50 meters per second times the cosine of 20 degrees, which is 47 meters per second. And if we want the y part of this, that's on the side opposite that 20 degree angle. So we use sine of 20 degrees is equal to y over 50 meters per second. So I'll multiply both sides by 50 again. And so 50 times the sine of 20 degrees is going to be 17 meters per second. All right, so that's finding the x and y components. 
Now another um, problem type that we might want to be able to do this on is if we have some object that's say sliding down an incline and uh, you know, maybe we're interested in, uh, in this gravity force that's acting on some object that's sliding down an incline. Uh, so if we have uh, have a box that's sliding down a ramp like this, and we drew the free body diagram for it, uh, or we draw the forces on this, it's not really a free body diagram since I've got the object uh, and the ramp shown, we'd have gravity downward, and if it's sliding down the ramp, then friction would act back this way, and our normal force is perpendicular to the ramp always. And then I'm just going to change colors here and note that we also have some movement, some acceleration down this way. Not a force, just want to show the direction of acceleration. Um, and, and so with this we can see that with the traditional setup for x and y, that uh, a lot of our forces aren't in the x direction or the y direction only. So we'd have to do that vector resolution process a lot. Now, it's, it's good to be familiar with the process, but it's certainly easier to avoid it whenever we can. In this problem, we can avoid it simply by making our x-axis in this direction parallel to the, uh, the ramp and our y-axis like this. So this is our x and our y now. And so we can see in this diagram that... Uh, that now our y-axis has the normal force on it, x-axis has the frictional force, also our acceleration, our velocities, um, our displacements, those will all be along the x-direction, don't have to find x and y components for those, um, so that's pretty handy. And then it's just gravity that doesn't fall on those axes. And so if, uh, if this ramp were at an angle theta, um, we can kind of picture this as theta would be smaller and smaller, so we have our, our ramp getting less and less steep. We understand that at the limit there, if, if theta went to zero, so we just have a box sitting on a flat, uh, flat piece of ground here, then gravity would be pointing straight down like it always does, and our y-axis would be pointing straight up and down um, like it has in the past. Um, when we rotate up some angle theta, gravity becomes some angle theta away from the y-axis. So this is theta as well. And so in this problem now, we'd need to find the force of gravity in the y-direction and the force of gravity in the x-direction. So let me just clean this up a little bit. So this is force of gravity overall. It's the force of gravity in the y and force of gravity in the x direction. And it's this component of the gravity force that's trying to make this box slide down the hill. Um, so at this point, uh, we, we could solve for the x and the y component. We've got theta. We know the hypotenuse there. So we could solve for the y part and the x part here.